Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're checking out a monitor. This is a BenQ EX2780Q, which is 144Hz, 1440p, FreeSync Premium HDR monitor with IPS panel. Full disclosure, this is a review unit sent to our channel free of charge by BenQ. I do get to keep the monitor, so if you have any questions, I will be using this monitor as my main monitor going forward. So if you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll be happy to do any testing. Now I have worked with BenQ in the past and they've been very good in working with us content creators. I have free control over this video, no one checks what I'm saying. I did get a reviewer's guide which has a few specifications and I was asked to look specifically into the speakers and also the HDRI features, but everything in this video is my own opinion. In the box we have the remote control, a remote control holder, it came with a HDMI and a USB-C cable, but missing a display port cable. There is the power cable, no power brick with this monitor, and we also get a installation CD and a quick start guide. The monitor tilts, but there's no height adjustment. On the back of the monitor, a couple of buttons, power button, this is the joystick where you can push it in for OK and navigate around, going left, right, up and down. And these are the two custom keys that you can configure. And there's a power LED down here. Here's the audio output. We've got two HDMI, two outputs, display port 1.4, and this is the USB Type-C for data only, does not support charging. You can remove this panel for a VESA monitor mount. And inside the stand, you can route your cables and keep them nicely hidden. So to put this video in context, I was using a 4K 32 inch 60 Hertz monitor with a VA panel before switching over to this one. And I have a ton of monitors here in my house, TN, VA, IPS, even CRT monitors, and I've been using different monitors uh, for quite some time. I don't have any fancy calibration and measuring equipment, but I will put some links down below in the video description that have thoroughly tested these monitors with all sorts of gadgets and just to yeah give you a second opinion. And also I looked at these reviews to back up some of the claims I'm gonna make. So my first impression when I got this monitor, firstly, compared to a 32 inch, it was a reduction in size, so that's something I felt straight away. I didn't have to use the DPI scaling anymore. 1440p at 27 inch is really comfortable, so you don't need to use any scaling, which I like. The colors really impressed me. So this is an IPS panel, which is known to have really good colors. Also the viewing angles, so if you sit in the front and you look in the center and in the corners, the colors, they don't shift, so that's very nice. I was very uh, impressed straight out of the box with the speed, so this is a 144 hertz panel. There are a few limitations in terms of uh, bit depth and what sort of refresh rate you can do, and I will cover that later, but straight out of the gate, uh, just moving the mouse and moving windows around, it was so smooth. And even editing videos, it actually lets you work a little bit faster. And then going back to a 60 hertz monitor, I actually found that really painful. So just be warned, if you have a high refresh monitor for a while, it will be difficult going back to a standard refresh monitor. The speakers impressed me. I removed my Logitech 2.1 system. The speakers don't, the built-in speakers that do not sound as good as dedicated PC speakers, of course, but they are the best PC monitor speakers I've ever heard, and they are good enough for me and for what I do. I also really like the included remote control, which is quite rare with PC monitors. Very handy is a volume dial here, which lets you control the volume of the speakers. I did find it a little bit unresponsive. So if you dial, if you move it really fast, it barely shifts and you have to actually dial it quite a bit. So you have to go fairly slow. This is just a, a little detail that I noticed, but might be something worth adjusting in uh, future products. Basically, if you want to quickly change the volume, if it's too loud at night or something, this might take you a while and you're faster with the keyboard shortcuts. I also had a look at the uh, built-in DAC. So you get audio through HDMI and through the display port connectors at the back. 
and we have support for up to 48 kilohertz and 24 bits. I also had a look, now you can see that here, so 24 bits, 48 uh, kilohertz, and it does support the loudness equalization. So I'm using a Radeon RX 470 if you're interested. This is really handy if you um, consuming content where the volume is different. Sometimes uh, you watch like a TV show and the volume is really quiet and then an ad comes up and it's really loud. This compensates that, so that's very handy. And not every sound device has this option, so that's why I'm mentioning it. And something else I noticed, the monitor does have a 3.5 millimeter audio output and both the speakers and the audio output, they will stop working when you turn off the monitor. Now you, you might say, well, that's obvious. If you turn off the monitor, there's no sound, but I usually have had my speakers connected to my PC. So when I listen to music, I will turn off the monitor to save a bit of power. So just be aware that if you have headphones or speakers connected to this monitor and you turn the monitor off, the sound will stop working. So next we're going to talk about what is going on down below here on the monitor. So the monitor has a couple of sensors built in. So it has uh, a sensor for the infrared remote control. Then it's got one which is a proximity sensor. And under IK, I reminder, you've got options for 30, 45 and 60 minutes. And basically the proximity sensor detects if you're sitting in front of the computer, in front of the monitor. And if you're sitting uh, for a certain amount of time, a message will pop up and remind you to rest your eyes. Could be, interest, could be of interest for uh, corporations, uh, occupational health and safety, that sort of stuff. And then we have an integrated light sensor and BenQ calls that Brightness Intelligence Plus, but it now also ties in with the HDR modes. So basically there's a light sensor and it detects how much light there is in the room, but also the white balance. And then it adjusts the brightness as well as the white balance to match whatever uh, lights and lighting condition you have in your room. And with normal SDR content, you can just press the Brightness Intelligence Plus button on the remote and then switch it to on. And what it will do now, for example, if it's late night and you've got the lights turned off, the brightness of the monitor will go down. But if it's daylight and very bright, the brightness of the monitor will increase. And if you have uh, changing white balance, for example, your light bulbs or uh, just natural light coming in through the windows, it will also adjust the white balance. And with this monitor, the light sensor now also ties in with HDR. So there are a couple of modes. We have display HDR, which is your standard HDR, like uh, on previous uh, BenQ monitors. But then we've got Cinema HDRI and also Game HDRI. And that's basically a combination of uh, normal HDR technology together with using the light sensor to optimize um, the picture. Now with HDR, this is very subjective and it depends on the content and you have to yeah just try it for yourself. I'm testing uh, the cinema HDR I mode. I use the Planet Earth Blu-ray 4K. It's got HDR and I found the cinema HDR I mode actually better looking. I will put some uh, photos for you to compare. The game HDR I mode in general HDR and PC games. I'm not a big fan of that. But uh, I used Strange Brigade and I could see a difference between the standard HDR and the HDI. -I. It uh, just displayed a little bit more detail, whereas with the standard HDR, it was a little bit uh, overblown. So this monitor is FreeSync Premium certified and you can see here the specifications, 4244 hertz. It does support low frame rate compensation. Now the uh, data sheet here does mention VA. I believe that's just a mistake and Bank you should contact AMD to update the list because this is a IPS monitor. I had a look on the uh, G-Sync website. Unfortunately, this particular model is not certified. Now, you're probably asking, well, does this monitor work with NVIDIA cards and with G-Sync? Um, it might, it probably does. And I could have tested it, but if it's not um, uh, certified, I'd rather not tell you guys that it's working and then you find out that one game or there's some issue or whatever. So very likely it will work with G-Sync, but they don't seem to have an official uh, test. It's definitely not on this list. There are a couple of other BenQ monitors, but not this particular model. 
So now let's talk about colors and refresh rate. At 144 hertz and with RGB uh, pixel format 4x4x4, it will only drive the monitor with 8-bit colors. Now, the data sheet on the website does say this is a 10-bit panel. In fact, it is an 8-bit panel with FRC, stands for frame rate control. To give you a quick idea how this works, so 8-bit means, for example, um, the colors are made up of red, green, and blue. So let's pick red. 8-bit means you have uh, 256 shades of red. On a 10-bit monitor, you have 1,024. So this monitor can really only display 256 different shades of red. So how can we do 10-bit color? Well, let's say you've got uh, two colors, uh, two shades of red. Let's say 128 and 129, and you want to display a color in between these two. The monitor will quickly switch back and forth between these two colors and then get a color in between. So that's how the technology works. Now, I have uh, looked at gradients, for example, in PowerPoint and in Paint.net and also in games. And if you look carefully, you will see some banding going on. But that was irregardless of using 10-bit or 8-bit. And I believe this is simply an issue with the content, with the software not being able to display more than 8-bit colors. Um, and yeah, I found this to be not an issue. So if you're worried about that, uh, I think this is an issue. For HDR, it is an issue. So how can you get 10-bit uh, colors? You have to reduce the refresh rate to 120 hertz. And we will see that the monitor now displays 10-bit colors. And you can also even go further. You can switch down to 60 hertz. And then the video card, I've got a Radeon RX 470, will be able to go to 12-bit colors. Now, uh, the monitor is not capable of displaying that, but it will take the signal with 12-bit color information. Whether or not there's a benefit to it, I actually don't know. I don't think so. Uh, if you have any tests that I can run in future to look at 8-bit and 10-bit colors, do let me know. But in my testing, I found this to not be an issue. It's one of those cases where more colors, more higher numbers seem to be more impressive, but really um, it didn't make a difference with the tests that I conducted. Now there's more to come and we will take a look at the on-screen menu and I will go over all the options. But now I want to say a few things for us retro gamers. So one of the first things I tried was DOSBox. I always wondered if we can get smooth scrolling uh, in DOS games. They run at 70 hertz and it does work. So to configure DOSBox, I used either the OpenGL or the Direct 3D render, I believe. And if you go into the menu, system, and then into information, you can see here the uh, refresh rate. So it's a little bit uh, not yeah, imprecise. It does say 72. And if you go back, it says um, 72 again. And sometimes it says 71. And that tells you that FreeSync is active. It's running at a different refresh rate compared to 144. And yeah, this won't come across on the video, but uh, this piece of text here, buttery smooth, running at 70 hertz. So yes, this is beautiful for us DOSBox retro gamers. Another interesting aspect of a 1440p panel is that 720p fits in nicely. It's basically half the resolution. And with a Radeon card, there's this toggle here, integer scaling. And this might not come across on the video, um, here it's quite blurry, it uses uh, bilinear filtering or something like that to scale the image and it looks very blurry. But if you enable integer scaling, this is now uh, razor sharp 720p with, with pixels that are sharp and precise. Now, what, uh, what use is that? Well, firstly, you can play games at 720p to get better performance and they will look nice and clear. But this is especially interesting for emulation. So I've been, I've been watching emulation videos and I've always been told that on a 720p monitor, apparently this is a, a multiple of many um, of resolutions that a lot of emulators use. So if you're into emulation together with FreeSync and being able to have basically native 720p with sharp pixels, this could be really handy. Playing older games at 1600 by 1200 also looks fairly nice. We are losing a little bit of area around the image, but it's not too bad. 
And something else you can do is create a custom 4x3 resolution on this monitor 1920 by 1440. And we also have to enter this down here and we should be good to go. And many older games will let you choose these, uh, this uh, custom resolution. And here we have Far Cry. So this is running at 1920 by 1440p. Here we can see the resolution. So this is the custom 4x3 resolution and Far Cry looks absolutely gorgeous and silky smooth thanks to 144 hertz. On the BenQ support page, you can download a monitor driver. This one is from 2019. Didn't really notice the difference. It does mention the uh, model number now in device manager, but otherwise I couldn't uh, see a difference. But look, you might as well download it and make sure that everything is identified correctly. And now we're going to have a closer look at the menu. The first thing I'm going to do is a factory reset so that you have the exact uh, same uh, options out of the box uh, as I show you in the video. So out of the box, let's have a look at the brightness and also the power consumption. So it's set to 65% and I've got a power meter down here. It's saying 29.5 watts. Let's crank this up to 100 watts. So the image is getting brighter and the power meter is now telling me 35, uh, 36 watts with maximum brightness. And let's have a look how much energy the monitor consumes when we dial it all the way down. So here we go. We are approaching the lowest brightness setting and the power meter telling me the monitor is consuming 19 watts. And now we are ready to have a look at all the menu options. So input, Depending on, on what you have plugged into the monitor, you can switch between them. So we have DisplayPort, which uh, is what I'm using. We have two HDMI ports, the HDMI 2, and there's also a USB-C connector. Now this one carries video signal only, not power. So you can plug in uh, a laptop device, for example. It won't charge. It will only output the image. So picture has a lot of options. We've got the standard settings like brightness and contrast, sharpness under advanced display mode. So here we have options such as uh, full centered and aspect ratio. This is if you have a device with a lower, uh, lower than native resolution and you can have the image being uh, stretched to the full panel size. You can have it centered or one by one pixel mapped or you can uh, keep the aspect ratio but maximize the vertical size. Super resolution, I had a look at the manual. This is for upscaling low resolution uh, material. I wasn't too impressed. It does work, it gives you a little bit of extra sharpness, but if you're using the PC, you're better off using the uh, integer scaling that's built in in the newer drivers. Um, if you're plugging in a source where you can't do that, then this might be an option worth checking out. And we also have Smart Focus. This is an interesting feature that lets you basically, yeah, focus on a certain area on the screen and you can play around with um, setting where this is. Not quite sure where this might be useful. Uh, maybe in a kiosk situation or something like that, but it lets you change the horizontal and vertical position as well as the scaling, which is the, the size of this um, smart focus feature. Now let's have a look at the color modes. So standard out of the box, then we've got Gamer 1 and I had a look in the manual and Gamer 1 is for playing CSGO games. Gamer 2 is for playing Battlefield games and Gamer 3 is for car racing games. Now when you activate one of these Gamer modes, there is an option here of Black Equalizer and Color Vibrance. So let's quickly talk about those. So Black Equalizer, if you crank this up, it will boost the dark areas and only boost the dark areas. So the idea is that if you're playing an FPS game and someone is hiding in the shadows, whatever, um, this just makes it easier to see dark areas. The other option, color vibrance, has to do with um, increasing the saturation and differentiating more 
the uh, colors. So this is of use in games that have a very muted color palette. Now all of this doesn't look natural at all, so uh, don't expect this to look realistic, but it will um, let you see things uh, easier. And that's the idea, to give you a comp competitive edge in, in shooter games. Now I'm playing terrible here, of course, but you can see how bright the red, for example, is. And the idea is to, yeah, make everything uh, more visible, giving you an edge in games. And yeah, I can definitely see this maybe helping you in some of the more competitive games that you know are quite popular at the moment, like Fortnite, Apex Legends, that sort of stuff, CSGO. Then we've got low blue light. And uh, actually, once you activate the uh, blow, uh, low blue light mode, you can then go into eye care. And there is an option for low blue light where you can set different modes. So this has the, the idea behind this is to lower the blue light um, and it's meant to protect your eyes. Very interesting is the e-paper mode. Let's have a look at that. And that basically turns off all colors. So you've got a monochrome or monochromatic uh, image uh, looks like this. So and it's meant to simulate uh, e-paper. So I've just reset the monitor again. And here we've got Strange Brigade. So let's cycle through all the motors. So game one, we've got game two and game three. Here's the user mode. This was the low blue light option. Rec 709, now that's an interesting one. I believe this is what, tradi what is traditionally called sRGB, which for some strange reason is missing. I haven't come across a single monitor in my life that does not have sRGB, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. And for some reason, it has a really low brightness setting. So I'm cranking it up to 65. I like to use sRGB. For content creation, it's very handy. My camera, for example, I've got a Panasonic camera. Um, it records in sRGB and it just makes sure that the colors between devices are consistent. Let's quickly have a look at the other colors. Here we've got color weakness. So, that has to do with if you have difficulties perceiving colors. And there's an option here for color weakness where you can activate a red filter. So let's see, this is default. Let's crank up the red filter. There you go, so you can see what effect that has. And let's go back and do the green filter. So we've got red and green filter, which you can play around with and see if that helps if you have any uh, issues with your vision. Let's go back to color and I think there's one more. MacBook, so if you're using a MacBook, use this mode. Apparently it uses a different color space or color range or something like that. Now, which two modes do I recommend? I like standard out of the box, it's really nice. And also like the Rec. 709, which I believe is the sRGB mode, but you just have to crank up the brightness. But everything you've, you will see in this video is with the standard uh, setting out of the box after a, a reset. And we're not done with the color menu. We have color temperature, normal, a bit bluish, a bit reddish. I like to use normal, but if you also uh, particular about white balance, do try the brightness intelligence feature to use the light sensor. And then under advanced, we have gamma, so you can adjust that 1.8 to 2.2, 2.4, 2.6, default is 2.2. You can reset all the colors. Then we've got AMA, which is uh, pixel response overdrive, but default is set to high. I played around quite a bit and I read some reviews for gaming. You want to set this to premium. The catch is that this setting here with the overdrive does depend a little bit on the refresh rate of your monitor. Now, if you're playing a game that's always maxed out at 144 hertz, you can leave that at the premium setting. But if you're playing a game that dips below like to 60 or so, then with premium, you will see uh, something that's called overshooting. So here a setting of high or even off might be better. So it depends a little bit on what content you are consuming. And then we've got the RGB PC range, which you can set to auto detect 
full RGB or limited RGB. So a good example is, for example, a device like a Raspberry Pi. If you connect that to HDMI, I believe out of the box it will do limited RGB. So if the blacks are washed out and the whites are not uh, clean, try playing around with this option. Uh, what do I recommend? I recommend that you use the same setting as your device. With In the PC world, it's usually full RGB, 0 to 255. In the TV world, consoles and so on, it might be limited RGB out of the box, but usually consoles also have a setting for that. So basically, it depends on the content, but if the black is like uh, washed out, gray, and the whites are like a little bit uh, not clean and, and more grayish, then uh, play around with these with these two settings. Under audio, we can change a couple of equalizer presets, live pop, cinema, dialogue, vocal, game, rock, party. We can set the volume, of course, and here we can mute the speakers. Eye care is all about looking after your eyes. So here we have got the brightness intelligence plus, which you can toggle on and off, but also you can just use the button on the remote control. Adjust by duration. I was not sure what this does, so I had a look in the manual and it talks about that the color temperature of the monitor changes as the usage time increases to reduce possible eye strain. So I think it just, yeah, changes the white balance if you use the monitor for a long time to look after your eyes. Eye reminder, so that's the proximity sensor detecting that you're using the monitor and reminding you to rest your eyes. Low blue light, we already looked at that to, yeah, apparently blue light is not good for your eyes. And color weakness, we also had a look at that option earlier. Custom key, so at the back of the monitor are two custom keys that you can configure to uh, be one of these modes for faster access. Let's have a look at the system menu. On screen display, we can change the language. We can change how long the menu appears on the screen and we can lock it so the, that the menu doesn't uh, pop up if you press a button. To unlock that again, you have to hold down a button at the back of the monitor for five seconds. This option, I was not sure what this does. So apparently this is a feature that lets you uh, software control monitor functions. Uh, but yeah, never come across anything that uses that. Input auto switch, that means that if you have several display um, devices connected to your monitor and you power you power cycle or turn one off, it will automatically cycle through. If you don't like that and you wanna always manually change the inputs, turn that off. Auto power off, I believe um, that will switch off the monitor if you are not using it for a specified amount of time in standby. LED indicator at the bottom of the monitor is a little power LED. If you don't want that glowing, you can turn it off. Resolution notice, that means every time you change the resolution, uh, a message pops up telling you what the resolution is. If you don't like that, you can turn it off here. Information, I use that a lot to check what FreeSync uh, refresh rate is running and reset all resets the monitor to out of the box settings. So guys, I've been using this monitor for around two weeks and really happy with it. So this is now my main monitor. I don't really game a lot. I use it mostly for my video editing, but I also do a lot of um, retro games testing with GOG and so on. So yeah, I do play a little bit, but not very much. So really impressed with the colors. Now this is an IPS panel, so um, it has certain strengths and weaknesses of IPS technology, nothing to do with the monitor. The ne negatives are definitely the IPS glow and the lower contrast. So an IPS monitor is good for daylight viewing and if you're consuming content that is very bright and colorful. It's not good for uh, dark cinema style setup of watching movies, especially science fiction movies that have a lot of uh, dark scenes. Here a VA panel would be better. Now comparing VA to IPS and TN uh, for gaming, and after having used uh, a VA gaming monitor and seeing the IPS in action, I would not get a VA panel for gaming, um, especially transitioning the pixels out of dark colors, out of blacks. VA is really slow. We're talking like 40 milliseconds or something like that. And that manifests itself in a lot of smearing and, and ghosting. 
So yes, IPS is a lot better in this regard. But VA has nicer blacks. But what good are nice blacks if they are smearing all over the screen? So for gaming, not, not that great. For watching uh, a Blu-ray movie at 24 FPS, yep, VA is a good option. And of course, you know, OLED is, is uh, better than all of these technologies. Now, a TN panel with 144 hertz, I have no idea. I don't have one. I would love to test such, such a monitor and see if there's a, a big difference. But in terms of motion, this monitor is absolutely fantastic. I had a look at reviews that measure uh, input lag and, and all that stuff, and this monitor is really, really good. It's one of the uh, fastest monitors out there. So if gaming is your thing, and you want the nice colors of IPS together with the viewing angles so that there's no color shifting, then this monitor is definitely worth looking at. Now, the speakers are nice. It's got the Brightness Intelligence Plus technology with the sensor and all of that. Looking at the prices, I believe in the US on Amazon 600 and in Australia uh, 800 Aussie dollars. So not the cheapest monitor and that's something you have to decide. Are the features and everything worth it to you? And yeah, so like I said, uh, I have this monitor now set up permanently. So if there's anything you want me to test, just let me know. Um, if it's something quick, I can do it pretty much on the spot, but I can also give you some long-term uh, feedback because I will be using this monitor quite a bit with a range of games. And yeah, so thank you to BenQ for sending us this monitor and giving yeah, smaller channels as well an opportunity to um, check out such products. And guys, my heart always has uh, retro in it, so absolutely. I was so glad that I finally got DOSBox running at 70 hertz without any uh, tearing and frame skipping. So if you're into emulation, then getting a FreeSync monitor can also be worth it. And there's some other benefits like being able to do 720p with integer scaling on Radeon cards and so on. But yeah, if there's something you want me to look at, do let me know. Um, it's easy for me to test and hopefully you found it inter interesting. Hopefully I covered a few things that other reviewers maybe don't look uh, into. Um, like I said, I'm not a monitor testing expert. I don't have all the equipment, but I've got a keen eye and I do take my time to use the, these products for longer, not just like a day or two and then um, read off the data sheet. So yeah, hopefully you found it interesting. Give me some feedback. Let me know what you think. And that's it for this video. If you found it interesting, subscribe to the channel, give it a like, share the video with your friends, and I shall see you soon with another one.